Right now, a holiday weekend heat wave. OK, maybe that's pushing it a bit too far, but Chris is tracking the return of possible 70 degree temperatures for your Easter Sunday. And we are on Riverwatch this morning as water levels continue to rise across our area, bringing the fear of more flooding along with it. And the Bucks hit the road for game three of their playoff run, how they got here and where to watch the game, even if you don't have tickets. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning. It is Saturday, April 20th. I'm Jamie Perez in for Josh this morning with meteorologist Chris Reese. We also have some very good news for the weather. Yeah, I know. You know what? Go ahead and call it a heat wave because I'm over <laughs> here sweating about to pass out. Just thinking about the fact that we haven't had temperatures this warm since October or shall I say Sunday. I I'm ahead of myself here, but <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, it's 40. Someone's at home like, what do you mean? It was 40 yesterday. Like what you're talking about? Just wait till you see the Sunday forecast. But winds are out of the north at six miles per hour, folks. And so uh, despite the north wind, we are still getting in on some milder temperatures um, as we go throughout the rest of today. So again, 40 right now, but it gets better from here. And so as we go throughout the rest of your morning, yeah, awesome. plan for uh, some temperatures to show up into the 50s. I don't know why I'm laughing at myself. We're about a degree <laughs> colder than we were at this time yesterday, and we're between two systems. So there's some cloud cover that you see over southeastern parts of Michigan right now. Some showers over parts in northern Minnesota. That is not going to impact us. We will stay in the sunshine today. What we actually have to look forward to is a little warm front that's going to be coming from the west. That guy will bring in the great news as we go into Easter Sunday. That's where we're going to be talking highs perhaps approaching 80 degrees for some folks. So not that warm today, but it's still going to be nice. Plenty of sunshine and we will see those highs around 67. Not that warm. You're just talking about sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at I was looking at tomorrow, Jamie. Summer's coming. That's I got what you're excited. talking about. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. My pleasure. We are on flood watch this morning as several rivers are expected to crest this weekend. The Wisconsin River is causing flooding concerns north of Madison. A slow no wake order is in effect right now. Crews are expecting the river to crest on Sunday at over 20 feet. They think it will start to recede Tuesday night. This will impact the roads right along the river, which include West Conant, West Carroll, and Summit Street in the city of Portage. In preparation, the city of Portage has sand and sandbags available for residents at Sunset Park. Now these are not pre-filled, so be sure to bring your own shovel. There's also a flood warning for Adams County running through the weekend. Sandbags are available for you at multiple locations, including the Highway Department and Solid Waste Building or the Town of Rome Municipal Building. We have more details on where you can get yours up on channel3000.com. Meanwhile, the Wisconsin Department of Transportation is looking at upgrading the bridge over the Wisconsin River on I-39-9094. This is just south of the Portage exit. The first public meeting on the changes happened this week. The bridge was built in 1961 and was last upgraded in 2012. According to the department, many parts of that bridge are in poor condition, some even severe condition. They're still trying to decide if they want to repair that bridge or just replace it altogether. They said hearing from people who know the area best helps them flush out their options. There's always uh, important factors to consider, and the public input is one of them. I mean, we it helps us build a better design product if we know what issues the public sees out there today or what deficiencies might exist. And this will take a while to complete. It was the first of many public meetings. They don't anticipate starting construction on 20, until 2024 at the earliest. If you want your voice in the mix, you can submit comments on the DOT website or go to channel3000.com, and we will get you there. And into the Channel 3000 Alert Center overnight, the search has ended for a man Madison police say pointed his gun at another driver while driving on the Beltline. This happened on the eastbound Beltline near Mineral Point Road around 8 o'clock last night. Officers say the 24-year-old man was speeding behind another car. When he pulled up next to the driver of that car, he pulled out a handgun and pointed it at them. He then exited while the other driver stayed on the Beltline and called Madison police. Officers were able to identify the gun-pointing driver and arrested him on a felony charge of second degree reckless endangerment. He's currently being held at the Dane County Jail. More local news now. Some area students are using their spring concert to honor Captain Corey Barr after he was killed in the Sun Prairie explosion last summer. The DeForest Area High School Band and Choir will perform the piece 
him to the fallen in honor of Corey Barr. Barr was a Sun Prairie firefighter, local business owner, and a father. The DeForest Band director has known Barr's wife, Abby, since college and says he wanted to both honor Barr and provide his students with a lesson on finding strength in community. Abby also met with band and choir students to share stories about her husband. And that concert will be at the DeForest Area High School Performing Arts Center May 2nd at 7 p.m. That concert is free to the public. And in Reedsburg now, all high school students now have access to a free breakfast. The school district approved a motion to offer that meal this week. Food Service Director Jennifer Jennings said she saw both the need and the benefits of the program for her students. Jennings started work on the project back in 2017. Last spring, it was expanded to Webb Middle School, and now all students through 12th grade will have access. More local news now, it's National Pet ID Week, and it's a good reminder to make sure your pet's tags are still readable and contact information is up to date there. The Dane County Humane Society is still offering reduced rates for their microchip services and personalized ID tags this weekend. It's $8 for the tags and $15 to insert a permanent microchip. The Humane Society says they took in 2,500 stray animals last year alone, and thanks to ID tags and microchips, more than 800 of those animals were reunited with their families. And as it's starting to finally feel a bit more like spring, that means more of our furry and feathered friends are starting to come out. The Dane County Humane Society says spring is the busiest time of year for their wildlife center. So far this year, they've already taken in and cared for about 300 wild animals, including a morning dove and a chipmunk. Once the animals are healthy enough, they are released back into the wild. Last year, they ended up caring for more than 3,800 furry patients. The Humane Society says if you see an animal you think needs help, you should call them before or trying to help the animal yourself. And it's the middle of April, but Americans are still getting the flu. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention says this year's flu season is unusually long, one of the longest since 1997 when they started keeping records. Officials say previously the longest flu season was 20 weeks. Right now, we're at 21. One reason is two types of flu viruses surfaced at different times. The beginning of the season was H1N1 predominant, and then that, as that went down, H3N2 viruses went up. We did have two different waves of influenza this year. So far this season, up to 41.3 million people showed flu symptoms. Up to 19.4 million visited the doctor, and as many as 610,000 were hospitalized. An important reminder to take common sense precautions like washing your hands and staying home when you're sick to prevent spreading the virus. This year's commencement speaker for the University of Wisconsin-Madison may be finding some time this weekend to work on his speech after saying earlier that he wasn't really planning on writing one. Former Badger and NFL star J.J. Watt said he was planning to add live his commencement speech, having no idea that he would be expected to write it out beforehand. But UW-Madison said that they wanted to see a copy of what he planned on saying. He was like, they have a teleprompter for you. What do you want on it? I said, no, I don't, nothing. I don't need it. Just give me a black screen and tell me when to stop talking. You know? That was literally my plan, but I found out you have to write some stuff down. So I have about a month to figure it out. He said he does have some messages he wants to get across, but also said he knows the Badgers in the crowd kind of just want to go and drink some beer. Spring commencement will take place May 11th at Camp Randall. And quite a bit of sports news this morning. Former Badgers quarterback Russell Wilson is now the highest paid player in the NFL. The Seattle Seahawks reached a four-year $140 million extension with a $65 million signing bonus. He's just ahead of Aaron Rodgers' new deal with the Packers, making $1.5 million more. Speaking of the pack, former fullback John Kuhn is returning to the team for a bit of a different role. The Packers are bringing him on as a sports analyst for their digital broadcast and game presentation and department. Kuhn played nine seasons in Green Bay and was a key member of the teams that won Super Bowl 45 and five division titles. Now he'll be contributing to the Packers.com and social media platforms. And the Packers are awarding a number of matching grants to youth football programs across the state. In our area, youth football groups in Horicon, Reedsburg, New Lisbon, Cross Plains, and Lake Mills are all receiving a $1,000 matching grant. That money will go towards equipment, uniforms, and facility improvements. The grants are part of the Green Bay Packers Give Back Community Outreach Initiative. 
Well, the weather is looking good this weekend if you're headed to the Bucks viewing party for their first away playoff game. Temperatures in Milwaukee will be around 60 if you're planning to go watch game three from the plaza outside the Pfizer Forum. The Bucks now lead the Pistons by two games, but getting the win wasn't quite as easy the second time around. The Pistons actually led by one at halftime, but in the second half, Giannis and Tito Cuompo took over. He ended the game with another double-double, 26 points and 12 rebounds. The final score of game two, Bucks 120, Pistons 99. Game three tips off tonight in Detroit at 7. Back here in Madison, the countdown is on for the first regular season game of the Capital City's new soccer team season. Forward Madison FC kicks off in one week from today at Bree Stevens Field. The team played its first exhibition game earlier this week. The soccer club's chief operating officer says the goal this season is to have a team strongly rooted in the community and that games will be family friendly and hopefully inspiring. We want the soccer players, the youth soccer players of today, to have something that they can look forward to in the future in a goal for them that uh, they, they stick with it. They, they put their heart and soul into it. Eventually one day they can be playing pro soccer in their hometown community of Madison. The team is also connecting with youth clubs in the area. They've had two close losses on the road and will have one more away game before their first official division game here at home again. That's on April 27th. And the Northwoods League season is just around the corner. The Mallards play in Madison, of course, but the Green Bay Bullfrogs are now the Green Bay Booyah. This is their new mascot, a chicken named Rocky. They used to be the Green Bay Bullfrogs, but are moving to a new stadium in Oshawabanon and changing their name to Booyah, which is a rich chicken and beef stew that's served at community events up north. The Mallards first game of the season is May 28th. Time now is 810 sunny skies and warmer weather ahead for your Easter Sunday, but there is a possibility of rain and thunderstorms a bit later in the week. You're taking a live look at the Capitol. Chris is in next with your full first alert forecast.
Welcome to the weekend, my friends, and it is going to be a beautiful weekend at that. It started yesterday, it continues today, it gets even better tomorrow. Let's go ahead and shape you up with how things are looking outside right now. Plenty of blue sky temperatures are already in the low 40s for a lot of folks. 40 here in Madison, and that's with winds coming out of the north. So that'll show you how our temperatures will trend as we go into the afternoon. We're warming up despite a north wind, which is certainly fantastic. That's setting the stage for what's to come later. 43 down in Janesville. Monroe's at 42. As you work your way over towards Mineral Point, they're at 45. Viroqua is three degrees away from 50 at this hour this morning and still plenty of sunshine. You've got some rain and some showers out to the south and east across Michigan, along with some uh, cloud cover and showers towards the north across parts of Minnesota. But all of that is going away from us. We are focusing on the warm front that's going to be coming into the picture and really warming up those temperatures, especially as we head into Sunday. So let's go ahead and plan out your day for you this afternoon. Lunchtime, you're going to see those temperatures right around 57 warming up to Towards 67 as we move into this afternoon and again plenty of sunshine not a lot of cloud cover no rain shower showing up on future track now overnight tonight our winds will change direction they begin to come out of the south so notice the lows won't even begin to drop all that much we're going to see those lows right around 46 then here we are Tomorrow morning, you're headed to mass, you're headed to church, or you're getting ready to take those pictures for Easter. Temperatures will already be into the mid and upper 50s and approaching the low 60s. 71 as we get you into the early afternoon, 78 for those highs in the afternoon. And with the southerly wind, I won't be surprised if some folks hit the 80 degree mark uh, for those highs tomorrow, which if you do, we'd actually be ahead of schedule. Typically, we don't hit 80 until May 5th. So we're gonna watch those temperatures closely tomorrow. I wanna know, let me know if you hit 80 again. We'll of course let you guys know how the airport does in Madison. Once we get beyond tomorrow though, things begin to become a little bit more unsettled. That's gonna bring our temperatures down just a little bit as well, though still being above average. Essentially, this high pressure all moves away, but the same low that's bringing the warmer temperatures will begin to bring a cold front. The thing is, it's going to stall out and you'll have a few waves of low pressure that ride along that cold front. Those are going to bring chances for rain as we go throughout the week, not just on Monday, but also on Tuesday and perhaps early on on Wednesday. And then another round of rain chances arrive as we go through Thursday night into Friday and then towards next weekend. So out of the whole 10 day forecast, the pick day will be tomorrow. And I'm just actually looking behind you, Chris. It looks beautiful outside. Does it feel beautiful? <laughs> oh, yeah, it feels beautiful. I might not come back in, Jamie. Just leave yeah. me out here. You can do the weather, right? That's, like, that's I'm just going to go hang out. I'll take it over. For okay, sounds good. Thanks, Thanks. Chris. <laughs> Love you. If you're looking for something to do today, you might want to make a visit to a U.S. National Park. The National Park Service is kicking off National Park Week by waiving all entrance fees today, which means admission to more than 400 National Park Service sites are free to everyone, but that entrance fee does not cover amenity or user fees like camping, transportation, or special tours. And if you haven't heard yet, they are back, and they, I mean terrace chairs at the Memorial Union, are now out officially kicking off the 2019 terrace season. Around 1,000 chairs will be at the Union through November. Another 300 chairs will be out at Union South. So if you're in the market for one yourself, the Union actually does sell red and white ones, although that might cost you about 350 bucks. A new tap house is now open on Madison's east side. Maybe it's worth the weekend trip for you. Oso's Brewing, which is based in Clover, opened its newest location. It's called the Madhouse, and it's located on East Washington Avenue in the new Marling building along the Yahara River. It is dog friendly. Time now, 817. Big news this week for parents with any gamers in the house and us millennials who might have grown up with Mario, Luigi, and that whole gang. And there are several shows and movies you should find time for this holiday weekend. Will's in next with three things to watch. That's just ahead on News 3 Now this morning, Saturday.
Temperatures this morning have made it to 40 degrees and we are going up from here, not just through today, but through the rest of the weekend as well until we get you towards early next week. Now, if you're headed out to the farmer's market, you will want that jacket at least early. Of course, we had those temperatures that were a little bit cooler earlier, but by 10 o'clock, I do think we'll be in the low 50s by lunchtime or closer towards the end of the market. That's where our temperatures will be in the upper 50s and closer towards 60 degrees. The overall setup uh, that is Bringing us our weather pattern features one system that is going to be this one on the East Coast that's moving away from here. We can say goodbye to that one, but this warm friends that you see across the West that is going to bring in warmer temperatures as we head into tomorrow. And in fact, we'll actually see that warm front starting today uh, as highs make their way towards 67 this afternoon. Jamie. All right, thanks so much, Chris. Trending now for any parents with gamers in the house, Microsoft has announced the release of its first disc-free all-digital Xbox. You can pre-order the latest One S console right now for 250 bucks. Lots of people online are questioning, though, why it's $50 less than the One S model that's already on the market. The official release date for it is May 7th. The move comes as Microsoft pushes its Xbox Game Pass, a subscription service that provides access to more than 100 games. Also trending this morning, there are a couple more Super Mario Mario games making their way to your team's smartphone. Nintendo announced it's releasing Mario Kart Tour and Dr. Mario mobile games this summer. The company says Dr. Mario fits the Candy Crush puzzle model. The move comes as Nintendo stock fell about one third over the past year. And if you're the type of person that likes to lounge around and binge watch some movies on the couch all weekend, this next piece will be for you. Here is Will Loper's picks in this week's Three Things to Watch. <laughs> Something amazing happened. New on home video this week is The Kid Who Would Be King. It means Sword of Arthur. What if it's the sword in the stone? <laughs> A young boy must take on the role of King Arthur to defend his home from the evil Queen Morgana in the family-friendly film. This realm faces mortal danger. There are four days until the solar eclipse when Morgana will enter the world of the living. And I'm supposed to stop her? That's ridiculous. I'm 12. The Kid Who Would Be King is available to rent or buy everywhere now. Who will join us? How humiliating. Me. Jenny. Oh, that's some strong for long eye contact, so we're gonna bounce. Yep. Newly arrived on Netflix this week is the romantic comedy, Someone Great. I actually just got a job in San Francisco. I just don't feel like I'm ready to leave New York. Gina Rodriguez stars as Jenny, who gets dumped by her boyfriend of nine years, gets her two best friends together for one last adventure before she moves away. DNA test Who I gotta kill? You okay? Basically, I just really want you to call your place of work and tell them you have your period or something and then just come over my apartment. And then I turn 30 and then I die probably. I need one last epic day with my girls. Someone Great is available to stream on Netflix now. Our best friend is out there drinking champagne from a bottle of green juice. I just want to scoop her up and make it all go away. I feel better now. I'm going to pick that up. Oh, God, listen, I, 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 wanted to, I don't know you very well, you know, but I, I just I wanted to ask you, how would you get Diane Court to go out with you? I called her up. But how come it worked? I mean, like, what are you? I'm Lloyd Dobler. This is great. This gives me hope. Thanks. All right. Finally, this week marks the 30-year anniversary of 1989's Say Anything. Look, why don't you just call Diane again? I draw the line of 700 turn phone calls. Cameron Crowe writes and directs the film that follows the romance between John Cusack, who plays high school senior Lloyd Dobler, and Diane Court, the valedictorian of his class. I love you, okay? What is that? What are you doing with your hands? Talk don't, to me. Don't One party, you're talking like that girl Sheila. Don't be mean. This is hard for me, too. Say Anything is available to rent or buy everywhere now. All my instincts, they return. Happy watching. Those are the three things you need to watch. And this is Will Loper for News 3 Now this morning.
And there's so much more ahead on News 3 Now this morning. Saturday next, we're running through the morning's top stories. Plus, do you live in one of the fastest growing counties in the state? Find out when News 3 Now this morning returns. Right now, the few, the proud, the women Marines will show you what it's like to be part of the minority in one of the toughest divisions of the American Armed Services. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning. It is Saturday, April 20th. I'm Jamie Perez filling in for Josh this morning. We'll get a check on weather with Chris in just a second, but first let's get you caught up on today's headlines. We are on flood watch this morning as several rivers are expected to crest this weekend. The Wisconsin River is prompting flooding concerns north of Madison. That river is predicted to crest at 20 feet in Portage, which is considered a major flood stage. But just into the Channel 3000 Alert Center overnight, that's not supposed to happen until tomorrow. There's also a flood warning for Adams County running through the day due to heavy rain in the forecast. Sandbags are available at multiple locations. Head on over to channel3000.com for a list. The weather is looking good this weekend if you're headed to the Bucks viewing party for their first away playoff game. Temperatures in Milwaukee will be near 60 degrees if you're planning to go watch game three from the plaza outside Pfizer Forum. The Bucks now lead the Pistons by two games, but getting the win wasn't quite as easy the second time around. The Pistons actually led by one at halftime, but in the second half, Giannis and Tito Kumpo took over. He ended the game with another double double 26 points and 12 rebounds. The final score of game two Bucks 120 Pistons 99 game three tips off tonight in Detroit at seven. 
A new tap house is now open on Madison's east side. Maybe it's worth a weekend trip. Oso's Brewing, which is based in Clover, opened its newest location. It's called the Mad House and is located on East Washington Avenue in the new Marling Building along the Yahara River, and it is dog friendly. And if you're looking for something to do today, you might want to visit a U.S. National Park. The National Park Service is kicking off National Park Week by waiving all entrance fees, which means admission to more than 400 National Park Service sites are free to everyone. But the entrance fee does not cover amenity or user fees like camping, transportation or special tours. All right, now we'll check on weather. Chris Reese. Got our forecast. Yeah, that's right. We're starting out around 40 degrees this morning. Jamie, plenty of sunshine out there. Winds coming out of the north at six, but we're going to see that wind directions change as we head into your Sunday. 43 in Janesville right now. Mineral Point is at 48. Viroqua is approaching the 50 degree mark already on this Saturday morning, and I do think all of us will get there as we move forward throughout the day. A couple spots still a couple degrees colder than this time yesterday, but this is the part of the day where we're actually going to see a switch in this map going from the blues to the yellows as we start to see these temperatures be warmer than they were just 24 hours ago. Again, plenty of sunshine around here. We will not have to worry about any kind of cloud cover or rain chances impacting our day. I do want to point this out, though. It could always be worse. Here we are. And it is snowing in parts of Indiana and Kentucky. Yeah, snowing there, but we have a warm front on the way, and that is going to set the stage for an absolutely beautiful Easter. Tomorrow's going to be a day that is full of good news as temperatures take a shot at reaching 80. But for today, sunshine and temperatures topping out around 67. Jamie? Thanks so much, Chris. And a traffic reminder to pass along. Starting on Monday, there is a major closure on University Avenue in Middleton that goes from Parmenter Street to Park Street. The road there will be closed in both directions as crews begin the first phase of reconstruction work in that area. It is not expected to reopen until early July, so we do want to point out that businesses in that area will still be accessible to you during that construction. More local news now. The U.S. Census Bureau's latest report shows Dane County is growing faster than any other county in the state. In 2018, Dane County added 5,584 people. That's more than double the second highest population gain of 2,000 people in Waukesha County. Most of Dane County's growth has been in suburban communities like Sun Prairie, Middleton, and Verona, but the city of Madison is also seeing growth, especially on the Isthmus. More local news now. High-speed ground travel could soon become a reality thanks to some UW students. The UW Badger Loop team unveiled its latest design of a high-speed pod designed to travel up to 100 miles per hour. The pod travels in a hyperloop, a train rail surrounded by a vacuum tube, so there is no air resistance. The students say it could become the future of transportation as the pods get more advanced over the years. Every year we've kept uh, refining our, our design more and more figuring out like little kinks, figuring out what works and what doesn't work um, for all of our mechanical systems, all of our electrical systems and everything. Um, and this pod is, is really the peak of that. The students will enter the pod into the fourth annual SpaceX Hyperloop competition this summer, going head to head with more than a dozen other university led teams from around the world. The judging is only based on one thing, maximum speed. Boeing 737 MAX planes are one step closer to flying again. A Federal Aviation Administration panel released a draft report today saying Boeing has made changes to the model stabilization system that are, quote, operationally suitable. The panel says Boeing can now start planning to train pilots on how the system works. The U.S. grounded all of the 737 MAX airplanes after the Ethiopian Airlines crash that happened in March. Time now is 834. The U.S. Marines iconic tagline, the few, the proud, but the face of the service is changing. Now several positions previously only available to men are now open to women. Vladimir Duthiers has this story. It takes minutes to set up and is one of the U.S. military's most effective weapons, allowing Marines to hit an enemy target up to 19 miles away. It takes up to six Marines to load and fire this M777 Harwitzer. The Marine Corps says increasingly a number of those Marines are women. 241 verified. Lance Corporals Juliana Yakovic and Amber Potter are field cannoneers. Why'd you choose field artillery? I'm a very physical person. I knew that I didn't want to have a desk job. I wanted to be out here training and getting down and dirty, firing the big guns, which is exactly what we do. Boom! Me personally, I want a challenge. 
Have you found that challenge? I found that challenge. <laughs> Potter and Yakovic are among the 120 enlisted female Marines working jobs that were previously off limits to women under the combat exclusion law. Fire! Now, their artillery battery trains day and night for battle. Has anybody ever treated you differently because you're a woman? Oh, no. No one ever has? Nope. <laughs> Honestly, like, they push me, motivate me, do better. Post! First Lieutenant Virginia Brody always dreamed of serving as a field artillery officer. But the law was still in place as she prepared to graduate from the U.S. Naval Academy. It was so frustrating. It was like no matter what we did, we could do all the hikes, do all the physical tests, like outperform men and women. It didn't matter. I knew there was nothing I could do except just wait. You throwing your hat in the ring several times for artillery, and all of a sudden, that combat exclusion rule went away. Yes, so I was very lucky, right place, right time. Fire! It would take more than luck. One more point, verified. Candidates first need to show they can meet the standards for the job in a timed drill. Ready, one. To win a coveted position as a cannoneer in the Marine Corps, you've got to be able to prove that you can lift these 105-pound rounds, carry them, and place them into this truck at least five times. I think it was more challenging for me to pass that test than it was for a male to pass that test. But um, I put the work in and eventually got there. She was one of two women at the Field Artillery Basic Officers course and went on to graduate first in her class of 137. She is now the first female artillery executive officer. What's it like to command men and women? So. I love being an executive officer. At the end of the day, they just want a leader who cares and someone who cares about their job and their well-being. And I don't think you can limit that to gender. But she knows changing those perceptions may take time. In September, former Secretary of Defense Marine General James Mattis said the jury was still out on women serving in combat units, but that the Department of Defense was trying to give it every opportunity to succeed. Those critical of lifting the law say adding women to these units could hurt cohesion and prompt the Corps to lower physical standards. Lieutenant Colonel Kenneth Del Mazo says the Marines' new gender-neutral qualifications directly address that concern. Regardless of your gender or anything else, can you perform the basic requirements of that specialty? That's what's changed. It's just adding that evaluation piece. Since the removal of the combat exclusion rule, has this been a success? First battalion in love of the Marines it has been. And, and while our numbers are small, I think the point is now it's available. So I have no doubt that you'll see, you know, Lieutenant Colonel Brody sitting in this chair a few years from now. What do you hope for the future of the Marine Corps? Definitely more women. I'd like <laughs> some more f female uh, coworkers. I want them to view everyone as Marines and for there to be a female in a unit for no one to think twice about it. Time now is 8.38. We hope you're spending the holiday weekend with family, friends, or outside. These temperatures are expected to be really nice. And we're swapping the typical weekend 608 with a trending segment. We'll take a look at a street for sale, an iconic Vegas chapel up for grabs, and a 98-year-old man proving age really is just a number. Thank you so much for staying with us on News 3 Now this morning.
Hey, happy Saturday, folks. Lots of blue skies this morning. As you step out the door, we're seeing temperatures right around 40 degrees. This wind coming out of the north at about six miles per hour. Folks, if you're headed out to the farmer's market, things are around 40 right now. But as we go through the rest of the morning, we're going to see those temperatures begin to warm up into the 50s and then eventually top out around 67 later on today, but not too shabby. A little bit better than next weekend, even though, or than last week. Uh, even though you still will need that jacket early on. So, so yeah. when can we take the jackets off? Because you're talking about sweating this morning. I'm ready for it to be 80. Fingers crossed. I should crossed. tell you the time of the year it is. Uh, we yeah. can take the jackets off in a solid July 30th. Okay. Uh, yeah, when everything's melted. And then a week later, we'll need it again, right? Awesome. <laughs> Well, it's a holiday weekend, so we hope you are spending time with family. And in lieu of a typical weekend 608 run through, we thought we'd share some fun stories that are trending right now. Here's an interesting story out of San Francisco. One of the city's most popular public tourist spots might soon come at a cost. There are plans to turn Lombard Street into a toll road. The curvy section of the street is packed with cars full of tourists who want to experience the Instagram legend in person. In the summer months, people will line up for up to 10 hours at a time just to get an opportunity to drive down the streets. Now a California assemblyman is proposing a pilot program to start charging and require that tourists make a reservation to drive down. The cost would be $5. There would be no physical gates, but there would be a license plate reader to scan cars as they head down the hill. 10 hours to wait. Goodness Ridiculous. gracious. <laughs> now in Vegas, an iconic business is up for sale. The Little White Wedding Chapel is on the market. Now it's only going to cost you a solid 12000 pocket change right there. $12 million. Yeah, no, 12 million. Sorry, pocket change, even more pocket change there. <laughs> but that's a far cry from the 50,000. There we go. There that go. Charlotte <laughs> Richards originally paid in 1951. Nearly 70 years later, she says it's time to retire so that she can travel the world. But the only catch is you will need to supply your own Elvis impersonator. Got him in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. And here's a birthday celebration that'll put your typical party to shame. Fred Lawrence is a World War II vet. He celebrated his 98th birthday by going to the gym. I wish I could be more like Fred. Fred and his friend Jeremy have been gym buddies for a couple of years now. They work out together three times a week. Fred survived three tours of duty during World War II and went on to be a pastor. Some inspiring stuff right there. Mm -hmm. If you're hoping to get in some physical activity, the weather outside will be practically perfect today, but will it last through the holiday weekend? Well, you're looking live over the Capitol. I'll have your full forecast next on News 3 Now this morning, Saturday. But first, let's get a look at who's three today. Happy birthday.
Temperatures are starting out in the 40s for us this morning after uh, seeing those morning lows in the upper 20s. So already we've warmed up 12 degrees from the morning low here in town. 52 in Mineral Point right now, 46 in Monroe. And folks, our temperatures are really going to go in a positive direction as we go throughout the day. We've got a lot of sunshine in play for the state of Wisconsin. You got some cloud cover and some showers across parts of northern Minnesota, along with some cloud cover and some showers across parts of southeastern Michigan as we speak. But we are between the two systems, folks, and then eventually this warm front is going to be moving our direction. That's where we're really going to begin to see an increase in our temperatures. And while we are looking at temperatures perhaps reaching 80, they're dealing with the cold rain and some snow in parts of Indiana and Kentucky. Thankfully, we are not them right now. So let's go ahead and talk about this afternoon. By lunchtime, we're talking temperatures near 57 degrees, 67 as we work our way into the afternoon. Watch what happens, though. As we go into the overnight hours, those winds that are out of the north right now are going to be turning and coming out of the south. That means our temperatures really aren't going to be able to drop all that much overnight. This is a warming wind, and so we're going to see those lows into the middle 40s. Then 9 o'clock, you're headed out. You're getting ready to celebrate Easter in whatever way that you'd like to celebrate Easter. We'll see those temperatures moving into the mid and upper 50s at that point. 71 by lunchtime, and they're still warming to go. How about... 78 for those highs and then into dinner time still keeping those temperatures into the 70s. Now southerly wind also begins to move moisture into the picture and hang on to that thought. If we make it to 80 tomorrow, we'll be ahead of schedule just about like every other day or milestone this year other than the 70 degree day that happened on April 8th. So stay tuned. We'll see how those temperatures respond. Here comes the decrease in temperatures as we head into next week. That decrease in temperature is associated with cloud cover and chances for rain. High pressure moving over towards the east. Here's that warm front tomorrow, a cold front coming in on the back side of that. It runs into the high pressure across the south and begins to stall out with waves of low pressure riding along that. That's going to be bringing rain chances. It's going to bring cloud cover and slightly cooler temperatures throughout early next week. And that's going to be something that we'll want to keep an eye on. So far, no major washout days, so that's certainly some good news. But there are several chances for showers in there. So the pick day of the forecast is certainly tomorrow with temperatures into the upper 70s. You can't ever take better pictures than you because <laughs> uh, this is Tori and Poinette and definitely on that model status looking flawless up against the door or whatever that is right there. Hashtag so. slay all day. <laughs> that moment when your cat is more photogenic than you are. I know. I know. That is beautiful. A, cat I feel though. like that cat was like, did you ask to take that picture of me? <laughs> Excuse like, me. <laughs> all right. Just put me on TV then. But if you're out walking your cat later, three o'clock, 64 sunshine. I really <laughs> want to see a cat on a leash like somebody just hit me up. I love those pictures. They crack me up every time. That's the best way to get me to laugh. Just send me like cats on leashes and I'm cracking up all day. There you go. Now you know how to make them laugh. So, <laughs> so your, your inbox is going to be flooded. I'm sure <laughs> uh, that was shameless plug, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have been asking you to share your morning with us. Beth Ann posted this picture on Facebook from Mount Horeb. It looks like sherbet ice cream. It looks really beautiful. It kind of looked like the scene outside this morning mm -hmm. as the sun was rising. I know what time it is now. I thought it was evening earlier and I, <laughs> I was like sunset. No, sunrise. Yes. Sunrise. Thank and a beautiful sunrise. Beautiful. Yes. Definitely. Thank you so much for sharing, Beth. So what does your morning look like? We'll take a picture, post it on the Channel 3000 Facebook page or on Twitter using the hashtag MyNews3Morning. We will share our favorites right here on News 3 Now this morning. And stick with News 3 Now all day long. Next, we're learning history from the people who have lived it. How one educator is teaching his students the best lessons, but without a textbook. This is News 3 Now this morning.
We're going to end the show this morning with a history lesson, no textbook required. This teacher lined up some American heroes to help out. Here's Carter Evans with that story. Do one more, do one more. Around here, U.S. history teacher John Corona is a celebrity of sorts. Hi, Ron. Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. How are you? Every year, for the last two decades, he brings military veterans to Martin Luther King High in Riverside, California. This is my, my 17th visit. Oh, wow. So they can tell their stories to his students. It's one thing to hear me lecture about it. It's another thing to read about it. But when you're when you sit down with somebody who lived it, it, it puts a whole new perspective on this for, for students. It was a happy part, and now it's a happy life. Junior Maya Moore is writing an essay on retired Army specialist Ronnie Geyer. Walking in today, I think I was just a little anxious about how the conversation would get started, but Ronnie's just great. <laughs> he told her about his service in Vietnam, some of the more difficult memories. As I was carrying our dead and wounded from the first major battle. This year, 300 veterans attended, but they didn't just come for the students. They came for John Corona. He's retiring in June after 40 years of teaching. Are you kidding? As a thank you for his service, he was presented a flag that once flew over the U.S. Capitol. Oh, my God. Corona is modest about his role in all of this, but to the veterans, he's more than just a teacher. Mr. Corona has been a guiding light here. I would classify him as a hero. A hero who's leaving an impact that goes beyond the classroom for generations to come. I can't tell you the number of times veterans have left this program and said to me they feel a whole lot better about the future of our country after having talked to our kids here. Carter Evans, CBS News, Los Angeles. Great story to end your Saturday morning. Chris, take us home with the final forecast. All right, absolutely, and we're home. Here's the forecast. There you have it. All right, we'll see you later. I'm kidding. We're going to see those <laughs> temperatures. Uh, in the upper 60s today, plenty of sunshine. 78 for Easter Sunday. I'm really hoping we can hit the 80-degree mark. Fingers crossed, Fingers right? Crossed. Fingers crossed. And then showers and thunderstorms return next week. Looks good to me. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you back next time.